Hello everyone. I am Nidhi Shas and welcome to the section of Grade 9 CBSE Max class. Today we are looking at the chapter chapter number 5 Introduction to Euclid's Geometry. Introduction to Euclid's Geometry. What do you mean by geometry? You have all heard this name geometry. And you are having an instrument box which is also called geometry box. What is the need of that geometry box? You use the geometry box or your instrument box to measure something. It is having scale, compass, divider, protractor, set square, etc. etc. in your instrument box. All these can be used for measuring, right? Then geometry box is simply used for measuring, for measurement, right? The word geometry originates from Greek words geo and metrine. Geo means earth and metrine means measure. In ancient times, this geometry, that means measurements, are used for geometry, are used for the measurement of land or earth. But then Euclid. He is a Greek mathematician. Euclid is a Greek mathematician. He from his surroundings studied about this geometry and arrived at some conclusions regarding line, point, surface, etc. Then according to his study, he arrived at some definitions. Approximately, he is having 23 definitions which is marked in book of elements something like that i actually don't remember the correct name i think it's book of elements number one first edition all the definitions are including in his book and that definitions that definitions leads us to the fact or the information regarding lines points surface length breadth height etc among that definitions all the definitions in are included in his first edition book but now we are discussing some points related to our needs that means we need to understand or we need to study line surface point etc so we take only few definitions relating to this thing and we are going to discuss that definitions. That's our first part. The definitions. From these definitions, Euclid arrived at some axioms. In his axiom, he explained more about the geometry. And using that axiom, or from this definition and that axiom, finally he arrived at some conclusions called Euclid's postulates. We are having five postulates and we have to study these five postulates. Based on these postulates, we are having questions on in our board exam. So, for studying that five postulates, we need to understand some definitions and some axioms. All the definitions and all axioms are not included. Only necessary ones are included in this chapter. And I am going to teach only necessary definitions and axioms right now. Then after that, using these definitions and axioms, we can arrive at the five postulates. And then based on that postulates, we can solve some questions. Okay, clear. He, here, seven definitions are written. And we need these seven definitions. And based on these definitions, we need seven axioms. Then we can arrive at the five postulates. This is the way we are going to explain this chapter introduction to Euclid's geometry. And the first definition of Euclid is that a point is that which has no part. A point is that which has no part. A point is simply, simply no length, no breadth or having no dimensions. We cannot explain or we cannot define the dimensions of a point. That's why Euclid said that a point is that which has no part. 
then a line is breadthless length when we consider a line this line having no breadth this ha line having no breadth only length when we are considering a line they are having no breadth only length is there that's why a line is breadthless length then the ends of a line are points consider this line then the ends are these points the ends of a line are points then a straight line is a line which lies evenly with the points on itself when we are considering a straight line when we are considering a straight line then the line which lies evenly with the points on itself that means when we are considering a straight line all the points on this straight line lies evenly on the same line then these points togetherly connected as a straight line if any of the point lies below or above then it cannot be connected as a straight line that's why he said that a straight line is a line which lies evenly with the points on itself then a surface is that which has length and breadth only when we are considering a surface it is having only length and breadth consider the surface of this table this table has length and breadth a surface does not have a height a surface does not have a height when we are considering a surface then that surface having only length and breadth the edges of a surface are lines it's clear the edges of a surface for this table this this is one edge this is a line this is another edge this is a line and this is another edge this is a line that means for a surface all the edges are lines for a surface all the edges are lines a plane surface is a surface which lies evenly with straight lines on itself we already said that a straight line is a line which lies evenly with the points on itself continuous points which are on the same line not below or above which are on the same line evenly on itself constitute a straight line like the same way if we are considering a plane surface then plane surface is a surface which lies evenly with the straight lines on itself that means if we are considering this surface this is our surface then this surface consists of straight lines evenly on itself that means this surface consists of infinite number of straight lines on this surface itself and these straight lines togetherly forms the surface clear these are the definitions we need to explain the axioms and postulates of euclid okay these are the definitions which one the point is that which has no path this one explains about a point that's a necessary thing a line is a breadthless length this one explains about a line that's also a necessary one then the remaining points from the remaining points we got an idea about a surface that means point line surface these are three important things regarding the axioms or postulates of euclid geometry for geometry point line and surface are very very important this is the basic definitions of euclid's geometry i think it's clear to you now from his definitions he gave some axioms related to the definitions and from this axioms he developed some postulate five postulates are there based on this five postulates we are solving problems or we are proving some conditions in this chapter problems means in this chapter we have to prove some conditions only proofs are there so the axioms are first one is things which are equal to same thing are equal to one another simple one things which are equal to same thing consider this as a and this is b and this blue is c 
if a equal to b and the same a equal to c then b and c should be equal this is the thing that explained in the axiom one clear consider this gesture of first object this is a and the second object is b this blue marker and the third object is c this is the red marker if i am saying that if this first object a and the second object b are equal a equal to b and the same first object a and the third object c are equal a equal to c that means a equal to b and a equal to c then we can say that these two b and c are equal to the same object this b and c are equal to the same object then b and c are equal then these two are equal this is the first axiom things which are equal to the same thing are equal to one another things which are equal to the same thing are equal to one another second is if equals are added to equals the holes are equal if equals are added to equal that means same value is added to another same value then the whole thing we get are equal that means the products are equal if the reactants are equal then the products are equal that the condition the same thing if equals are added to equals then the holes are equal clear if equals are subtracted from equal the remainders are equal if the same value is subtracted from another same value then the remainder we got are equal that means if from this duster i am cutting 2 cm length from this side and 2 cm from this from this side that means equals are subtracted from equals then the remaining remainders are equal that means the remainder remaining length of the duster is same if equals are subtracted from equals the remainders are equal clear okay if consider these two markers these are equals and I, I am removing the cap from the red marker and removing the cap from the blue marker and these caps are of equal length these markers are of equal length that means i am removing equal length from two equal markers then the remaining length of these markers are equal that's the condition when equals are subtracted from equals the remainders are also equal the next condition is things which coincide with one another are equal to one another if i am placing this marker above this one if these two coincide with each other then these two will be equal but when i am placing this duster above this marker this will not coincide each other that means they are not equal if two things are equal then they will coincide each other if things which coincide with one another are equal to one another the next is the whole is greater than the part the whole is greater than the part the whole is always greater than the part when i am considering this cap of the marker then this is a point or this is a part or this is a small portion of this duster and when i put it back this is the whole thing the whole thing is the marker that means the whole is greater than the part things which are double of same things are equal to one another things which are double of same thing same example consider these two marker when we are taking the double of these markers if this is of equal length then the doubles are of equal length things which are halves of same things are equal to one another same consider to the consider these two markers when i am taking the half of these two markers then they are also of equal length that means if the markers are of same length then the half of these markers are of same length if the markers are of same length then the double of these are of same length that's the last two axioms these are the seven axioms euclid explained it to us and based on this definitions and this axioms we are having five postulates now we have to explain that five postulates i think the axioms are clear to you okay then we move to the 
postulates. Now from the axioms and definitions which explained by Euclid, he arrived at some postulates. We are having five postulates and based on these five postulates, we need to prove some questions. At least one or two, one or two questions. Very simple chapter and you are having maybe one question only from this chapter. It's a small chapter and you are getting only one question from this chapter. So, study the postulates really well. And if you are asking any question from this chapter, then that is purely based on these postulates. Using this postulate, we can simply prove that problem. Only proofs are here in this chapter. After the postulate, we are solving one or two uh, proofs related to the postulate. First of all, we have to study very well these five postulates. Okay. Now moving to the postulate. First one is a straight line may be drawn from any one point to any other point. That means if we are giving two points, first is A and the second is B. Then we can draw a straight line between A and B. A straight line can be drawn from any one point to any other point. Any one point to any other point. If we are given two points, then we can surely draw a straight line connecting these two points. Then the second is, a terminated line can be produced infinitely. If a line terminates here in the same line, AB, terminate at A. Then if we are producing this line again and again, we can produce this up to infinity. A terminated line can be produced up to infinity. That means it can be produced infinitely. Then the third point is, a circle can be drawn with any center and any radius. We can draw a circle with any center and any radius. Center and radius are of our choice. We can take the radius as 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 units, etc., etc. Any units we can take. And the center is also, we are fixing the center. So, we can draw the circle with any center and any radius. The next is all right angles are equal to one another. All right angles are equal to one another. When we are considering right angles, these right angles are equal to one another. All the right angles are equal to one another. And the fifth one is two distinct intersecting lines cannot be parallel to the same line. Two distinct intersecting lines cannot be parallel to the same lines. Never ever two distinct intersecting lines be parallel to the same line. It cannot be parallel to the same line. Maybe parallel to some other lines or some other intersecting lines. But never ever cannot be parallel to the same line. These are the five postulates of Euclid. These are the five postulates arrived by Euclid. Let's look one more. The first one is. From any point to any other point, we can draw straight line. If a line is terminated and we are again producing this line, we can produce this up to infinity. That means terminated line can be produced infinitely. Whenever we are drawing a circle, we can fix the center and the radius. Any center, any radius. Then all right angles are equal to one another. Right angles are equal to one another. Right angle means 90 degree angle. Right angle means 90 degree angle. 90 degree angles are called right angles. Below 90 are called acute angles and above 90 are called obtuse angles. Equal to 90 are called right angles. Perpendicular lines always makes right angles. Two distinct intersecting lines cannot be parallel to the same line. If we are considering two distinct intersecting lines, then it cannot be parallel to the same line. It cannot be parallel to the same line. Maybe parallel to another line or another intersecting line or another line which is lies on a same plane, but cannot be parallel to the same line. These are the five postulates put forward by Euclid. On based on this Y postulates, Euclid explained his geometry called Euclid geometry. 
only the basic introduction we are studying in this class or in this grade means 9th grade we are studying only the introduction to Euclid geometry in the next class that means in the 10th grade you are having Euclid's division lemma that means to find HCF we can use Euclid's division lemma this is only the introduction to Euclid's geometry based on this postulates Euclid expressed his geometry and from this postulate we can solve some problems that means some proofs okay clear postulates are clear now moving to some problems related to the postulates or some proofs related to the postulates like the same way you can solve all the proofs related to the postulates now i am solving two problems first one is if a b and c are three points on a line and b lies between a and c then prove that a b plus b c is equal to a c this is the line segment a b and c these three points are on the same line and b lies in between a and c you can see that b lies in between a and c then we have to prove a b plus b c is equal to a c okay now i prove this in two methods first is a normal method like we are following a numerical method and the second is by euclid's axiom okay when you are asking the same question in your exam you must solve this using euclid's axiom for to understand well i am using another method too okay let I am taking a b as x and b c as y then let a b is equal to x and b c is equal to y then we have to prove that a b plus b c is equal to a c so from this it is clear that from a to c from a to c the length is x plus y that is this is the length for x and this is y therefore a c is equal to x plus y then it is clear that a b plus b c is equal to x plus y which is same as a c this is the simple numerical method but we have to solve this using euclid's axiom so now by euclid's axiom we know that a b b c and a c these are coinciding lines look a b is the segment lies on a c that is a b lies on a c same way we can say bc lies on bc lies on ac that means they are coincident lines by axiom for euclid's division sorry euclid's geometry we are having seven axiom in this by axiom for we know that when the coinciding lines are of same length that means ab and bc are in the same ac ab and bc lies on the same ac then by axiom 4 we can say that ab plus bc is equal to ac by axiom 4 by axiom 4 by fourth axiom we can say that ab and bc coincides with ac ab and bc coincides with ac therefore a b and b c together equal to a c therefore a b and b c together equal to a c that's why i am writing a b plus b c is equal to a c simple one now second one is prove that an equilateral triangle can be constructed on any given line segment we have to prove an equilateral triangle can be constructed on any given line segment now let us consider a line segment a b now i am going to draw a circle with a as center and 
a b as radius a as center and a b as radius i am going to draw a circle and this is the form of the circle one part of the circle okay then taking b as center and b a as radius i am going to draw one more circle and this is the circle with b as center and the same b a as radius now these two circles meet at this point and take this as c take this as c join a to c and b to c now we got a triangle triangle a b c now we don't know is this a right angled triangle sorry now we don't know is it an equilateral whether it is an equilateral or not so we have to prove this an equilateral triangle so we have to prove this as an equilateral triangle now from this triangle abc we know that from the first circle and this is the first circle from the first circle this is the first circle in this circle a b and a c are radius of the circle a b and a c are radius of the circle therefore we can say that a b is equal to a c first circle a b and a c are radius of the same circle therefore we can say that a b is equal to a c now consider the second circle with the b as center this is the second circle this is the second circle from the second circle b is the center and ba is the radius therefore we can say that ab is equal to bc from the second circle ab is equal to bc from the second circle now we get two conditions that ab is equal to ac and ab is equal to bc therefore by euclid's axiom therefore by euclid's axiom if ac and bc are equal to the same ab then ac equal to bc if two things are equal to the same thing then both the things are equal that's by axiom euclid's axiom here ac and bc are equal to the same ab therefore we can say that ac equal to bc that is ab is equal to bc is equal to ac that means three sides of this triangle are equal then this triangle is an equilateral triangle then this triangle is an equilateral triangle thus we can prove an equilateral triangle can be constructed on any given line segment we are just taking the line segment ab then we draw the equilateral triangle this is the proof for the question okay clear this is the thing we have to study in this chapter the definitions of euclid's geometry from the definitions we are moving to the axioms then postulates only three things definitions axioms and postulates from axioms and postulates we can solve all the problems related to this like this we have to prove any problems using the axiom and postulates just study the axiom and postulates and remember the axioms and postulates from that axioms and postulates we can solve all the problems like the similar way we have done in this problem okay i think it's clear to you and study well this chapter this is also a small chapter and you can score 100 percentage of mark from this chapter okay i am nitishas and thank you for joining me in this section let us meet with another chapter in another session and i am signing off thank you all